think Dana had a vision, and I think her vision came to fruition. Everything she planned and wanted, including her love of her life, is all right there today. Dana compliments Nick, and Nick compliments Dana. They, they just go together so well. He makes her laugh. He just makes her happy. And as a father, that's all you can ask for. I'm just so proud of Nick and Dana and the beautiful couple that they make. She's very easy to talk to and get along with. and. That's Dana, yeah. I, I met her for about an hour, and it was like I knew her all my life. He's really grown since he's known her, and you can tell he just idolizes her. The veil was actually the train of her dress, but it will be my veil. When we took it to where I got the dress, they confirmed that it's the same type lace as my dress, and so we clearly have similar taste, which is amazing, and now I'm blessed to be able to wear a piece of her dress in my own wedding, which is wonderful. Dana has been my treasure. We are very close, mother and daughter. And I know that Nick will love her and treasure her like I have. I've been talking with you. Long talks with you. One thing that's always been part of the relationship that Dana and I have had is that I've always been her rock. I've always been there for her, but I never tried to influence her decisions. To me, it was most important to teach her how to fly, not to fly for her. And uh, she's done a great job. She's taken off and flown. She's gone to great heights, and I'm very proud of that. She, mm -hmm. she knows that uh, I respect her decisions, and I just, uh, I'm very proud of her. always been his own person. He just, he ha had a flair. We used to do arts and crafts shows together and he made things and sold them and he bought himself a quad by making little ghost kids. And, you know, encourage that in a child that you have to be an individual. Yeah, Nick was getting a little up in age there. I, I was sort of giving up a little bit of hope in him getting married and then Dana come along.
amazing. When this process of planning the wedding started about seven months ago, after Nick so graciously came to Linda and I and asked our blessing on his asking Dana to be his bride, and uh, she said yes, and the planning began. And my wife gave me three instructions, and they were very simple. They were two-word instructions. She said, show up, shut up, and pay up. And I followed those instructions and let them plan this beautiful evening and, and look what we got. Isn't this wonderful? So, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Nick. Congratulations, Nick and Dana. This is a really awesome thing. And Dana, you got a really great guy. And Nick, you really got a great girl. And you really, this is probably the best decision you've ever made as long as I've told you. Um, but Dana, Nick Sarasic is a lummox. There's no doubt about that. He'll be the first guy to uh, headbutt a turkey on Thanksgiving, or not be able to get the child lock open on a toilet and pee on the floor in a child's room. Um, he might take his dad's Bronco joyriding with some college friends and destroy the radiator. But Nick Sarasic is also the person that might be the first person you tell that you're getting engaged. He might be the first person there when something really horrible happens to pick up some of the pieces for you. And I think everybody knows that about Nick, as much as he is a lummox. He is also somebody that's a really good friend. He's been a great friend to me. And I'm sure he's been a great friend to a lot of you guys. And I'm really happy that he met somebody that compliments him so well, that can deal with him. And um, I'm really, really happy to know you guys. So if you guys want to raise your glass and somebody give me one, may you live well and long and have many children or just a couple if that's what you want. And congratulations again. Over the now 13 years that we've known each other, I've got to, to know Dana inside and out. And when I think about Dana, it's her character that really shines through. Besides being an amazing friend, she has this infectious positivity that just draws people in. She is driven beyond imagination. She is constantly seeking new challenges. And she is organized, perhaps to a fault. <laughs> just the other day, I walked into her closet. It's the same as always packed to the brim, but everything is meticulously color-coordinated. She has her shoes stacked from the floor to the ceiling in their original boxes with written descriptions of what's inside. That's Dana. It was just two years after we met that we sat on the front lawn of Nassau Hall together listening to Garrison Keeler, who gave our baccalaureate speech. And he knew he was talking to a crowd of type A's. And he reminded us to take time. To take time for ourselves, to throw caution to the wind, and enjoy life to its fullest. Keeler said, we can all live boldly with great spirit and panache, and sometimes throw whites and colors into the same wash, or buy the expensive wine, the kind with corks, never mind the cost and walk into strange cities and have the good sense to get lost. Live your lives so as your days come nigh, your adventures are the envy of others. When Dana first introduced me to Nick, I could tell immediately that while they had a lot of similarities, he complimented her so well in so many ways. He is her spur of the moment guy who whisks her away to New Orleans for jazz fest or takes her on road trips to upstate New York, even when life is busy and there are deadlines looming and there isn't possibly enough time to fit it all in. Garrison Keeler ended on this note. 
Believe in the foolish vision that comes out true. Believe that all that is essential is unseen. And today, we all believe in you. And with that, I'd like to raise a glass to Dana and Nick. We're all here today because we support you and we believe in you. Continue to challenge each other, live life to its fullest, and dream big. When the father of the bride has a chance to say something at a wedding, you want to impart some words of wisdom. And I'll kind of steal from the priest who married Linda and I 44 years ago. He stands up at the podium to give the homily, and he just stood there for about two minutes and didn't say anything. And then he begins with these words, and I'll never forget this. I was driving home from the golf course yesterday with the top down on my convertible, and on the radio came Frank Sinatra singing, Love is Wonderful, the second time around. I thought, oh my God, where's he going with this? <laughs> he asked everyone who was in the congregation at the wedding to stand that was married. And he said, now, those of you who have been married a year or less, love for you is romance, it's wonderful. He said, now, all of you who are married a year or less, sit down. He said, now, those of you who have been married in the two to 10 year range, that's when the childbearing begins. Now all of you sit down. And then he went through raising teenagers. And then he talked about when you start becoming an empty nester and the kids leave home, and it's just the two of you again. And then he asked everyone who was married 50 years or less to sit down. And the last people standing were Linda's grandparents. And I think at that time they were married, what, 62 years, Linda? And he was trying to explain to us that your love has to change and grow as you go through every stage of your life. And the only words of wisdom to my new son-in-law and my daughter, just love one another. There's going to be times when you're not going to like each other very much, but love one another even at those times. Charlton Heston's wife, at their 50th wedding anniversary, one of the paparazzi said to her, Now, Mrs. Heston, you have to tell us, 50 years, didn't at some point in time you consider a divorce? She goes, oh my God, divorce never. Murder a few times. <laughs> Love one another, cherish one another, and have a wonderful life together. Raise your glasses, say hi, eh? <laughs> Out of affection for Dana and Nicholas, we have gathered together this day to witness and bless their mutual vows which will unite them in marriage. To this moment, they bring the fullness of their hearts as a treasure to share with one another. And they bring their dreams which will bind them together. And they bring that particular personality and spirit out of which will go the reality of their life together. All of us rejoice with them as the outward symbol of the inner union of hearts, a union which is created by friendship, respect, and love. I think Nick was so honored that everyone came 
and he told me how gorgeous and beautiful Dana was. He couldn't have been more pleased. Well, she's such a wonderful lady that uh, he, he's happy. The wedding was just over the top. It was great, you know, lovely. I went to the attic to pull out my wedding gown and I found my wedding gown as a yellow mustard color. <laughs> but then I found my train, so I asked Dana if she would like to wear it. She was hesitant, but when we brought it to the bridal garden where she bought her dress, they thought it was just perfect, that the laces were absolutely perfect. So she agreed to wear it, and I was thrilled. 44 years later, that Part of my wedding dress was part of hers, which was wonderful. My friends, we have gathered here as the people of God to witness the marriage of Dana and Nicholas. We come to share in their joy and to ask God to bless them. God gives human love, and through that love, husband and wife come to know each other with a mutual care and companionship. God gives joy, and through that joy, husband and wife may share their new lives with each other. Tana, I, I often remember walking home from Rembrandt's right after we just first met, feeling like I was walking on air, because I was in complete awe of how I found someone so well suited for me. Ever since that day, I've known that we should be together. I take you, Nick, to be my constant friend, my respected partner, and my love. I promise to love you without restriction, to trust you without fear, and to want you without demand. You make me a better man. You encourage me to follow my heart and to make the hard decisions, and I promise to help you to do the same. You challenge me in ways that other people do not and cannot, and I promise to do the same for you. I promise to challenge, support, and accept you. To laugh with you, dance with you, cry with you, and cherish our marriage. Surrounded by our friends and family, I vow to love you forever and take you as my husband, the father of our family, and my best friend. I'm so excited for our life together. I'm excited to wake up next to you every day. I'm excited to hold your hand through the good times and the bad. I'm excited for the mundane. I'm excited to start a family. I'm excited to grow old together. I love you with all that I am. I'm going to be so proud to call you my wife. makes him be more in tune to what's going on at the present time instead of just being sporadic. And he makes her love life instead of being so tense. So it's perfect. Perfect.
they do complement each other very well. She's a very well-organized, driven person. She always has been, and uh, he enjoys life. Dancing with our shoes off until the dawn. He's liking kids. He loves his sister's children, and he just wants to start a family of his own, and I think Dana's ready to start one, too. They just, uh, they care about each other an awful lot, and that's extremely important in a relationship, in a marriage. So we're, we're thrilled. I just wish them all the best, and like someone says, marriage is not 50-50, sometimes it's 40-60, sometimes it's 10-90, <laughs> but you make it work. To the day we'll sing the morning song. All right, Mike, so we have a little twig sticking out of the ground. That's my spot, and Marcus will be right beside me here. We want to make sure we get it right the first time. We, uh, we don't want to mess up. It's a, it's a hard job being co-best man. All the way to the front, Lex. Come on, leave that there. Mommy. That one's hard to get to, so I'll give you one that's easy to get to, okay? Love it. Thank you. 